stage. We're working on the estimating the cost of common stock financing. We had done method one, the dividend valuation approach previously in our last video and came up with 13.03%. But we said the problem with that approach was it assumes a constant growth rate and it requires firms pay dividends. So we need some backup approach when those two assumptions are not realistic. And our backup approach is the security market line, which we introduced in our chapter on risk and return. The security market line says the required return is equal to the risk-free rate plus beta times the expected return on the market minus the risk-free rate. And remember, the required return for investors is the cost of capital for the company. So this required return for stockholders just gives us the cost of common stock financing for companies using the security market line approach. Now the risk-free rate, we approximate with the 10-year treasury yield. So we see that as 4.8%. Beta given as 1.6. Expected return on the market is given as 9.4%. And the risk-free rate again is just that 10-year treasury yield at 4.8%. Now the most common mistake I see people make on this security market line approach is they get it all set up right and then they make an error in their math because they forget about order of operations. Have to be very careful with your order of operations. Do what's within parentheses first. So we take that 9.4 minus 4.8. 9.4 minus 4.8 gives us 4.6. Now the next step, we've done with in parentheses and gotten 4.6. Now next in order of operations is multiplication. So we multiply by 1.6 and we get 7.36. Now we're down to 4.8% plus 7.36%. So we just add that 4.8 and we get 12.16 percent as our cost of common stock financing. Now the advantage of the security market line approach is it works for every company because we can estimate beta for any company and the other values the treasury yield is easy to find the expected return on the market is something we can estimate. It doesn't require dividends, it doesn't require a constant growth rate. The downside is that most studies of the security market line show that beta may not be a reliable measurement of risk other factors may influence required returns. So we're a little bit concerned about the reliability of the security market line at this point, And we don't want to put too much weight on that model. So we want another way, a backup approach again. And our next backup is the bond yield plus risk premium approach. This is a very simple model conceptually. Go back to chapter one and we learned a couple of things. One, investors are risk averse. They prefer less risk. In order to get them to take more risk, they need extra compensation, a higher rate of return. We also learned that stocks are riskier than bonds, so therefore combine those two ideas and we know that our stockholders want a higher rate of return than our bondholders. Our bondholders are going to get the yield to maturity, so that's their rate of return, and we just add in a risk premium to reflect the idea that stockholders want a higher rate of return than bondholders. So the yield to maturity was given as 7.8%. Our risk premium is given as 5.5%. Stockholders want to earn at least 5.5% more than bondholders. So we just add those two numbers together. 7.8 plus 5.5 and we get 13.3 percent as our required return. Now the downside with this approach 
is that it's not very precise. The risk premium is not really known with any degree of certainty. We've seen it change over time. Over the last year or two, the 2007-2008 period, the risk premium got exceptionally high as we had kind of a financial crisis and investors were scared of stocks. During other time periods where investors are very comfortable with stocks, that risk premium gets a lot lower. So it changes over time and it's really hard to estimate where it's going to be until after we've seen some changes. The other problem is this model is based on yield to maturity, which requires companies have bonds outstanding so we can estimate that yield to maturity. If our company has not issued any bonds, we don't know what the yield to maturity would be and therefore we wouldn't be able to use this model. So we have three models. None of them work 100% reliably. So what our solution is, is to just take an average of the three. So we're going to average out our three methods and say the required return is equal to 13.03 percent from our dividend valuation approach plus the 12.16 percent from our security market line approach plus the 13.3 percent from our bond yield plus risk premium approach average those out so we're adding them up and dividing by three 13.03 plus 12.16 plus 13.3 divide by three it gives us 12.83 percent as our cost of common stock financing in the last video we're just going to put it all together and solve for the marginal cost of capital